this meeting of the Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Would the Secretary please call the roll? Yes. President Hill? Here. Vice President Smalley? Here. Director Foltz? Here. Director Lang? Here. Director Largate? Here. Mm -hmm. We have here. all the directors here and a quorum, so we can proceed. First item on the agenda is changes to the closed session agenda. Additions to the agenda, if any, may be made in accordance with California Government Code Section 54954.2 of the Ralph M. Brown Act, which includes but is not limited to additions for which the need to take action is declared to have arisen after the agenda was posted as determined by a two-thirds vote of the Board of Directors, or if less than two-thirds of the members are present, a unanimous vote of those members present. Do we have any changes to the closed session agenda? Seeing none, oral communications regarding items in closed session. This portion of the agenda is reserved for oral communications by the public for items which are on the closed session portion of the agenda. Any person may address the board of directors at this time on closed session items. Normally presentations must not exceed three minutes in length and individuals may only speak once during oral communications, please state your name and town or city of residence at the beginning of your statement for the record. Mr. Holloway. Hi, I'm Bruce Holloway of Boulder Creek. I only want to address item D, uh, the anticipated litigation item. Um, I've asked the district council what the facts and circumstances are around this, because if you read this section, you, can, you only have to right to go into closed session if there are existing facts and circumstances. And so when I asked, the answer I got is that the existing facts and circumstances may not be known by a potential plaintiff and therefore don't need to be uh, released or revealed. So I guess I just want you all to know that, that if you go into closed session on this item, it's because you believe that the plaintiff doesn't know what the facts and circumstances are. Otherwise, there would probably be a record of what the facts and circumstances are, and it would there'd be some other paragraph that would apply. But your district council always invokes E1, which says the facts and circumstances are not known to a potential plaintiff. So look at each other when you go into closed session on this item. If you if you honestly Unless you honestly think that the plaintiff doesn't know the facts and circumstances, you have no authority to go into closed session on this item. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holloway. Do we have any other oral communications regarding items in closed session? Let me check online. There's nobody from the public with their hand up. I do not see anyone from the public online. Okay, so moving on, we will now adjourn to closed session. At any time during the regular session, the board may adjourn to closed session in compliance with and as authorized by California Government Code Section 54956.9 and Brown Act Government Code Section 54950. Members of the public will be given the opportunity to address any scheduled items prior to adjourning to closed session, which we just did. So it is my understanding that our council wishes to have. Um, Jennifer present for a closed session or part of this? Just for the first item. For the first item? And Mr. Maddock also? No. So we're going into closed session now. So we're leaving the Zoom meeting. Yep. October 3rd, 2024. The Board of Directors has completed the closed session and we will now return to open session. <coughs> Reporting out from closed session. With regards to item 4A, the Board will make an offer to an applicant for the position of human resource uh, specialist. Uh, this was voted unanimously. With regards to items 4B, C, D, and E, uh, there was no reportable action taken. So 
Excellent. Moving on. Changes to the agenda, additions to the agenda, if any, may only be made in accordance with California Government Code Section 54954.2, Ralph M. Brown Act, which includes, but is not limited to, additions for which the need to take action is declared to have arisen after the agenda was posted, as determined by two thirds vote of the Board of Directors, or if less than two thirds of the members are present, a unanimous vote of those members present. Do we have any changes to the agenda? Board members? No. Oral communications. This portion of the agenda is reserved for oral communications by the public on any subject that lies within the jurisdiction of the district and is not on the agenda. Any person may address the Board of Directors at this time. Normally, presentations must not exceed three minutes in length, and individuals may only speak once. Please understand that the Brown Act limits what the Board can do regarding issues not on the agenda. No action or discussion may occur on issues outside of those already listed on today's agenda. Any director may request that a matter raised during oral communication be placed on a future agenda. Do we have any oral communications from the public? We have one hand up. Uh, to get one hand up from uh, Forest Springs. Uh, good evening. Um, I would uh, like to start by um, really commending Garrett Roth for his work in getting the revised package out for bid and working with the community to define the needs and um, assisting especially Brackenbrae in uh, doing what needed to get done in order to um, do the best they could to move forward with their FEMA grant. So um, in and also in addressing the comments of um, DWR. So I really want to make sure that he is thanked and commended for that effort. It happened quickly. Um, and that's not always possible when you're working with um, outside firms to put information together uh, and starting from where he did. Um, I'd like to really address just briefly um, the process for identifying the temporary general manager. Uh, so I know the board is, is complete and in complete agreement about the urgency of getting this position filled. We have no question, I have no question of that. But I was wondering if you could uh, tell us about anything about the process that you're going through and um, any sort of estimate of the timeline before this uh, either a temporary or a permanent general manager is appointed. Is that within what you can tell the public about? No, unfortunately, no. Um, we have been interviewing people and we've had some negotiations. Uh, uh, Jeff, I, I go. Jeff, I think, I, I think the answer is unfortunately no. Right. If we need additional support in that, let's turn it over to Barbara. Yes. yes. There's really nothing we can say. Okay. Um, well, I, I do know. Uh -oh. Oh, okay. You got muted again. She got muted. She muted okay, there I am. Um, I, I just, uh, I, I realize the board understands the urgency, so I'm not going to pressure on that point. That's just difficult watching it from out here. So we appreciate everything this board is doing to, to keep the district running and to um, identify this person and for the consolidation process to continue with, uh, with uh, definitely some staff shortages. Um, as uh, Garrett knows, we've, we've offered to help where we can with volunteer efforts where that is appropriate um, with regard to, for example, uh, securing the, um, the, the EPA um, money or the, the congressional line item that went in to make sure we get that almost a million dollars for the tanks. And I know there is a process involved there. So um, that's that's it. I just want to offer our um, thanks and uh, a, a continued offer for help and collaboration. Okay, thank you very much for your comments. Do we have any other comments from the public at this point? Mr. Holloway. Hi, I'm Bruce Holloway from Boulder Creek. <clears throat> um, there's a neighbor of mine who's running for the fire board here in Boulder Creek named Dave Scruggs. And uh, he commented on next door this week. He was talking about what is the job of being a director. And one of the things he said was, 
Excuse me just a second here. It's pg and &E telling me they just turned off my power. Go ahead. Um, one thing my neighbor Dave said about being a director is one of the tasks is to view the bills, to view the bills. And um, I don't think there's been a bill list here since the end of May. It's October now. Um, so you're four months behind in terms of looking at the bill list. The last time there was a bill list on the agenda, I think it was 51 pages. Um, when I used to be working, sometimes I would leave the house early in the morning and I would wind up working all day and I wouldn't even eat until it was dinner time. Um, and so I know I can go all day uh, with one meal. But and it's the same thing with the bill list. If you have three months worth of bill lists all at once, then nobody's really going to read it because it's 51 pages long. But the bill list can be printed out every month. All of this is a printout. The last one showed a login um, of a district employee. It was not Heather that printed it out. It wasn't uh, Brian Fruits that printed it out. It was just an ordinary district employee in the finance department, as far as I can tell. And, and so all it is is a printout. And I just don't understand why this board doesn't insist that staff provides a bill list every month. So again, we've got a, uh, an agenda here with no financial information. And I really think you should be looking at the bill list like my neighbor Dave understands that he needs to do for the Boulder Creek Fire Protection District. Um, the format is three minute um, uh, speak once format doesn't really allow for rebuttal, but I wanted to address some of the things that were said at the last meeting. Um, it was said that the board was unable to act unless it paid $100,000 to Brian Fruits. Um, I just don't believe that. I think uh, the person who said that probably didn't read the extension agreement. I read the extension agreement. I knew that Brian's contract expired on August 21st. So when the board uh, reported out of closed session on August 15th, there was no reportable action. I knew that Brian's contract had not been extended and it was going to expire on the 21st. So anytime after that, he was no longer an employee. And um, so I don't think it was a sudden resignation, as was said. I don't think it was a crisis. I think we're at time. Yes. Yes. I, I would say uh, in response to that, however, he was interrupted for about uh, 10 to 15 seconds regarding with and, Jeff's phone. And, we and so he time. went over yeah. a little bit. But I think rather than interrupt and say time, just allow him to finish. It's the polite and courteous thing to do. I, I generally always allow people to finish unless it goes on and on and on because my my philosophy on this is let the people speak. And as long as it's not abusive or, or excessively long, an extra minute or so, I just can't get worked up about. Okay. So <coughs> anything on that. Okay. So moving on. Unfinished business, none. New business, Harris Cross Country Pipeline Environmental Contract. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Clare. Thank you. Uh, so, for or any Rob, which one of you? I'll be presenting. Okay. Uh, and yeah, for any of the board that haven't met me, I'm Chris Clare. I'm the environmental planner for the district currently. Um, and the item I'll be presenting today is an agreement for the Cross Country Pipeline uh, Environmental. Uh, cross country pipeline replacement environmental review. Um, and the project, the cross country pipeline replacement, will be replacing five separate pipelines which were damaged in FEMA declared emergencies. Um, but before we can replace those, we need to go through environmental review. Um, that en enables us to both be reimbursed by FEMA as well as uh, meet California Environmental Quality Act uh, regulations. And for this environmental review, we received three proposals. Um, we selected Harrison Associates as the highest rated proposal. Their proposal is for about $58,000, and we expect to get reimbursed 75% of that back by FEMA um, once the reimbursement actually goes through. 
uh, the Engineering and Environmental Committee has reviewed this proposal and they recommended the agreement move forward. Uh, yeah, and that is the basics of this item. Uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions about this. <clears throat> Brian, any questions? I have no questions. Elena? Um, yeah, I, I, the only thing I was really surprised about was the, the broad range of prices that came back. Um, uh, <laughs> um, and I, and the, that was a, a shock. And the, just there was a lot of optional stuff in there. And I just want to make sure that's all combined in the final price, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, and that's it. And there just was um, one typo with a blank inch HDPE pipe. And just FYI. All right, thanks. Okay. Mark? Um, the district has used uh, Harris Associates prior to this, as I found out during the discussion at the e, &E committee meeting. Um, they successfully completed uh, a similar, not this number, but similar uh, project in a diverse area for us. Um, I was surprised at the difference between their bid and the second bid, but I don't recognize either of the other two firms as having done work with us. I attribute the differences in, in bid pricing to um, lack of understanding of what it takes for the district to get these through the review process. So I'm happy that we're able to get Harris back on board again with this. Um, yeah, just a <clears throat> couple of questions. I mean, I like to have at least three people bidding. Uh, one seemed to be <laughs> really one of those. Um, <laughs> if, if you're, uh, but there were three. <laughs> yeah, there were three. But one of them is if you're really that desperate to select us, we'll do it for eight hundred thousand. Um, yeah. So uh, I mean, this is one of those happy experiences where it's good quality and also mm -hmm. uh, lowest price, which is great. I just want to make sure I was clear though on the. Um, on the reimbursement side of this through FEMA. Are all of these projects related to one disaster or another? Yes, uh, so there were two separate disasters that happened and all of them are related to either one or the other. So CZU fire for Foreman, Bull and Bennett and the storms for South Zone and Huckleberry? So a portion of the Bennett Spring Line was affected by the windstorms in 2023, and a portion was affected by the CZU fire. Okay, but because um, I guess maybe the South Zone pipeline, I wasn't necessarily familiar with where that is. So we're, we're sure that's covered. Down. That's located in Brookdale, and that's part of the CZU. Oh, okay. Fire. So you actually are we, are we talking then about the cross again the cross country kind of threw me off when I was looking at the projects. So we're talking about the Clear Creek pipeline, the raw water pipeline. So there's the south tanks located on Western, but you have to access it through Alba. So you go up Alba Road yeah. to Western, and that's above Brookdale. That's where the tank side is. Okay. And then we have a temporary line above grade that is going down the mountain to Brookdale. And so we want to bury that line. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. All right. I mean, as soon as you said Alba and Western, I got it. Oh, okay. That was affected by the fire. Yeah. Just South Zone sort of was like, where is that again? Um, okay. Okay, and then the Huckleberry is for the storm, right? The Correct, that was on New Year's Eve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 2022, uh, January 1st, 2023. Okay. Yeah, it's great. Uh, good work on getting three bids and vetting them out. Then I'd like to make the motion that the board of directors approve the agreement with Harris and Associates to conduct the cross-country pipeline replacements environmental review for an amount not to exceed $58,574.83 and, and authorizes the engineering manager to execute the agreement. I'd second that. Secretary Collin Roll. Public comments. Public comments. comments. Yes, public comments. Okay. Do you have any public comments? Point of order. Uh, point of order. Yes. The board policy manual is specific that we're not supposed to do a motion until after public comment. Mm -hmm. yes. 
And okay. and that that was raised by Mr. Holloway uh, earlier. Yeah. Now, whether or not I agree with it or not, in terms of flexibility and when it happens and all that, that is the policy manual right now. Okay. So. Okay. It's not rigid how it's written, but it, we should follow yeah. it okay. yes. for best right. flow. So noted. Thank you. I'm happy to take comments. And I do not see any. Okay. Um, I don't see any online. See no hands up online. No one in the room. Secretary, please call the roll. Sure. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Smalley? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Lane? Yes. Director Largate? Yes. Okay. Passes unanimously. Okay. The next item is the RGS contract amendment number three. Uh, Barbara, were you going to present that since uh, the memo is from you, or do you? Sure. I mean, I'll be pretty quick. The amendment is for uh, Ms. Ipilotti to continue providing financial services to the district. Her um, agreement, the time has lapsed. It's the same terms, et cetera. And so we're just asking for approval to extend uh, her contract to March 31st, 2025. Um, not necessarily need to go that far, but um, the services are provided up until that date. If we have um, the ability to replace her uh, before that, we certainly have that option. So do we have any comments from the board on this? Uh, I have no comments. She answered the one question I had that we're able to get out of it if we want to move to a, a full-time. I, I don't have any questions. Oh. Comments from the public on this? Seeing none, uh, we'll make a motion here. The Board of Directors approves amendment number three to management and administrative services agreement with regional government services and authorizes the board president to execute the agreement. We have a second. I'll second that. Thank you. Please call the roll. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Smalley? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Largay? Yes. Director Lane? Yes. All right. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Moving on here. Contract change orders. I believe you're in the consent agenda. I, I believe so. Yes. yes. And we'll the same thing. Um, so on the consent agenda, do we uh, have anyone who's going to pull one? Bob? Yes, 11C. 11C. I have some questions about it. <laughs> Okay, item 11C is a resolution approving an amendment to the fiscal year budget to pay federal taxes owed by the district in the amount of $42,071.68. And you're, you have a question, Bob? Well, I, do you want to dispose of the rest of the consent agenda first or, or no? Go. I don't really care which way we do it. Go. Okay. Um, Heather is with us, right? Yes. I don't. Heather, are you online? Here. Hi, here. Heather, um, I, I want to make sure I understand what this is all about, uh, particularly whether or not this is a one-time thing or an ongoing thing. I'm assuming that this, these are taxes associated with the fact that um, we did not use the loan proceeds, 100% uh, of loan proceeds within a three-year time period. Um, no, this tax is more related to the higher investment rate that you received on the unspent bond proceeds than you were supposed to. Oh, and that would be that would be the investment that we changed to in order to get a higher higher rate. Yes, that's cor that's correct. Okay, is this going to be an ongoing thing? Um, the the way the arbitrage and I have Cameron Cameron from Weist we excuse me Weist Law here um, to to support me here so. 
I say anything wrong, I'm hoping he'll hop on and correct me. But um, the first arbitrage check is at five years and then the next five years. So this is the first check for the 2019 bond. There'll be one other check and all the bond proceeds will be spent for sure by then. So you may owe additional money on the 2019. In about a year, the 2021 bonds proceed arbitrage check will be due. And that calculation will be done at that time. And I anticipate that additional tax will be owed. Even if we spend, time. even if we spend a hundred percent of it before uh, the five it's, years. It, time. Yes, it's it's more about you have um, want to say a two, two or a three year grace period, and then after that, we did not fully spend the proceeds. So after that, you are you need to put the. Um, proceeds in a rate restricted fund. Cameron, please hop on if I'm saying anything wrong. And no, we did so far, so far so good, Heather. Thank you. And, Thank you and, so and so we did not put it into a rate restricted fund and therefore we basically have to disgorge our excess profits effectively. Yes. It's it's a I'll say it's a calculation. It's not it's not, I won't say it's a hundred percent of your of your excess earnings, but it's a calculation. It's it's almost like a penalty. Yeah. Uh, it would be interesting to know what the net of that all um, yeah. is ultimately. Um, one last question on that. So th just to make sure I'm clear on this, so the original sin is that we didn't spend all the money within a three-year time period. Is that correct? That's so, the first sin, and then you invested the proceeds at a higher rate, second uh, sin. Uh, second sin. Is there any um, any leeway we get because of the fact that this 2019 load got tied up with both the fire, federal disaster, and the pandemic, which severely limited our ability to be able to spend it all within a three-year period? It's it's more the penalty is more about the rate sin than the not spending sin. So if you had kept the funds after that first three year period restricted at that lower rate, you would not be paying the penalty. Okay, but if we had spent it in the three year period, we wouldn't have been paying the penalty. That doesn't sound like there's any leeway for, okay, you know, you switched over to this other fund um, because you hadn't spent it. All right. That's correct. There really is no leeway. And it really has more to do with when you went to, um, um, to, to, to um, sell bonds, what homework did you do at that point? What proof do you have that you're going to spend the money within three years? What engineer's estimates do you have for each one of your projects? You know, I. We had all of that. At the time. Um, okay, so yeah, I think it would be interesting to know what our net out of this ultimately is. Um, and I have a follow-up question on the then. You're mentioning the uh, the need, or we should have utilized rate-restricted uh, on this. Investments, um, yes. Yeah. Investments, Correct. thank you. Um, do we have the opportunity to do that on the 2021? Um, you've already, we're going to be spending it down in the next month or two. So at this oh, point, okay. it's, so it's going to be, it's going to be gone. Okay. It's going to be gone. Okay. Yeah. All right. The, the key so at here, this point, yeah, the sorry, key is, please. Let's, let's spend our money in three years and not borrow more than we have to, to spend in that three years and to make sure we're ready to spend it in that three years. We were not ready to spend it in 2019 in hindsight. We, we just weren't. I would also say another key here is to make sure that we have uh, a finance manager that understands this and uh, keeps us on yep. this track. Mm -hmm. yep. well, I don't think we could have predicted the pandemic or the fire, so I no, don't think that interest, had any... But the interest rate and restrictive... Yeah, yes, yeah. what are you saying that not to borrow more than what we yes. need and, and that it could not be predicted? We're going to run this... Well, we're, we, we will not have spent... Um, our 2021, I don't believe, in three years, will we? She's saying she, in the next couple months. She said it'll be gone. Yeah. Well, it'll be over three years, though. Yeah, over we three took years. It out, we took it out earlier than uh -huh. November and December. 
<laughs> okay, great, thank you. So are we done with the consent agenda then? I think we are done with the consent agenda. Well, we have to vote on things separately. Yes. We have to vote on the two items that were not polled as a consent and the other one. That's why I ask you how we want okay. to do it. Okay. Public comment. Is there yeah. any? Do we have any public comment on the consent agenda? Please. Uh, uh, Karen Brown, North of Boulder Creek. And I have a problem with the CIP change orders that um, our JMB Construction Corporation is uh, charging us. If you look at the Edinburgh State, it's over a year old. And if we look at the last checks that were given to the Monterey Peninsula Engineering of $2,742,000, I think they've been paid. So why are we going over this CIP change order for Alta Via and Juanita Woods when it's already been paid we also paid Anderson Pacific Engineering, who worked on the Alta Via pipeline, three million six hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars. And this is from going through the checks that I could find. And again, you have not given us the checks for the past three months. And when I was going through the checks, I noticed two of the packets had the exact same checks in it. Somebody's not paying attention. You need to look at where the money is going. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Howard. Yeah, on this, um, let me see, whatever it's called. Um, I, I want to start with the millions uh, be, before I get lost here. Uh, so there's one figure. That, well, there, actually, what there is here is there's two reports, and then there's the IRS form. And on the IRS form, it says unspent proceeds, 3.9 million as of August 14th. But this does not jive with what Heather has told us previously that uh, the, the two loans, I think uh, roughly 2 million was left on one, mil on one loan and 1 million on the other loan as of June 30th. So uh, less than 3.9 million on both loans as of June 30th. So I don't understand why the 8308T says that there's 3.9 million on August 14th of, of unspent proceeds. It doesn't add up, I don't understand. Um, the second uh, figure that's in millions, well, I guess it's close to a million. Um, it indicates that during the first three years, the district lost almost $900,000 on, on these, um, on the investments with, uh, with the, uh, the bond proceeds. I'm not kidding, it, it's $900,000 loss during the first three years. So that's what happens when you borrow a ton of money uh, and you wind up investing it in something like the county investment pool, which was only paying 0.4% interest for a few years. Uh, that's only on one of these loans, we lost $900,000. Now, after the two years, then the money got reinvested so that we're actually making a profit now, and we, we're having to pay that back, pay, pay that some of that back to the government. Um, so this is really a uh, tails you lose, uh, heads they win kind of a deal. We can lose 900000 and we don't get any credit for, for having that happen. But as soon as we start making money, then all of a sudden we have to pay. Um, but even then, I have to say that as far as yield restricted uh, investments, I don't see I don't see why not get the most you can get. Uh, it, it really shouldn't change your behavior. It should get the most you can, you can, and if it's too much, you'll just have to pay some back. But I don't see why you should have a goal of earning less than you can get out in the market. Um, Actually, that can lead to corruption. If you're so determined to get less than the market rate because you think you need to uh, obey this yield restriction, then somebody else is going to swoop in and they're going to take the profit instead of instead of having it go to, go to the U.S. government. Um, uh, I see my time running out, but uh, this is the first time in two years that you've had a bond council 
at a board meeting that could actually answer some of these questions. And I've got more questions, but um, I'm out of time. Thank you. I, I have to say, though, that if the district had gotten that $19 million loan that Brian Proust was talking about this summer, there's no way that we would have been able to spend $19 million in three years. We would be right back in the same situation of paying penalties three years from now. Okay. <laughs> so we need to vote. I, hang on one sec, though. I, I didn't have a follow up on that. Uh, there, there was a question that Bruce asked that I, I thought might be helpful to get Heather's input on, and that was the difference in the amounts between June thirtieth and the uh, eighty thirty eight filing. Uh, is that is that uh, why would why was that Tim? I can answer that Heather. Um, Thank just, you, Cameron. Yeah, just uh, um, so in essence, uh, the differential is due to um, accrued interest. Uh, first of all, the your bank statements um, only allowed us to see to July thirty first. Of 2024, and the calculation date for the for the full five year uh, period was August 14th, 2024. Um, so there was some accrued interest that needed to be calculated um, between the two. So that is the predominant discrepancy. Um, so when you do the math on those um, those items, it does all foot properly. Thank you. Okay. Okay, are we done with the consent agenda at this point, I believe? Except for voting mm -hmm. to, to, approve. to accept. Yes, so motion to accept consent agenda. I move consent agenda. You can vote on them separately, don't you? Don't have to. Barbara? We can accept. Yeah, I was trying to unmute. You should, Bob pulled the one item. So. You need to address that item separately and you can consent to A and B. Okay. Okay. So we'll consent to A and B. Bob pulled item C. Do okay. we have a motion for item I'll, C? Uh, item C. Uh, I'll, I'll second that motion to. Oh, oh, sorry. Which one are we voting on? I'm right. very confused. Which one are we voting on? Are we voting on the consent or the 11C? Well, I, 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 I'm sorry, I can't follow this if we're not. Okay, so item 11A and item 11B, I believe we already agreed to. No, 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 no we didn't. Okay. You yeah. need to vote on those. You need right. to accept those items as part of, as the consent items, and then C uh -huh. is its own item now. So, okay, I'll, so, so make a motion for item A and B. I'll, I'll make the motion that the board uh, accept uh, consent items uh, A and B, as indicated. Second. Okay. Ready for a vote? President Hill? Yes. Vice President Smalling? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Largate? Yes. Director Lane? Yes. Okay, A and B are unanimously accepted. I move that we accept item 11C, budget amendment. Well, I would I would say the if I may, I move that we adopt a resolution approving an amendment to the fiscal year 20, 2024 2025 budget to pay federal taxes owed by the district in the amount of forty two thousand seventy one dollars and sixty eight cents. Thank you. I'll second that. Okay, President Hill. Yes. <clears throat> Vice President Smalley. Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Largate? Yes. Director Lane? Yes. Okay, unanimous. I believe we are done. Are there any other items before the board? This meeting's adjourned. No, no. We're, we're not adjourned. We're, re we're reconvening to back into yes, closed we're session. Yes, we're reconvening right. to closed session. I'm sorry. Yes. Reconvening to I was hoping, that was a, a statement of hope. <laughs> <laughs>
<clears throat> we have an estimated time. I was hoping we were done. Um, Okay, it is 7.40 p.m. October 3rd, 2024. The Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District is returning from closed session. Uh, the item on the closed session agenda. Well, Jeff, we just have no reportable action. Yeah. Reportable action. Uh, we have no reportable action from the closed session. So um, with that, uh, we have no more items on the agenda, so we will during the meeting. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, CTV.